On to this story now. The families of the Craddock Four say they are now going to sue the state. This, this after the last murder suspect in the matter has died. Matthew Koniwa, Stelom Tauli, Sparrow Mkonto and Fort Kalata were assassinated in June of 1985. And their families are still looking for answers. But to tell us more, we are joined uh, by journalist, author and also the son of Fort Kalata. Uh, Lukanyo joins us via Zoom. Mr. Kalata, a good morning to you and thank you so much for giving us your time. Hi, good morning, my lady. Thank you so much for having me. I think let's let's start off firstly with how you found out that this uh, last suspect, Armanus Baron Duplessis, uh, had passed. My lady, we were informed by our lawyers uh, last week, uh, Friday, that uh, Hermanus Duplessis had died on the 16th of May already. Now, our, our understanding is that uh, the NPA had actually informed our lawyers a week prior uh, to them informing us. So, yeah, that's how it came about, ma'am. Uh, just to, uh, I think that we're, we're, I want to take a few steps back, if you will, Mr. Talata, and just talk a little bit about just how much we know about Hermar Hermanus Barrent Duplessis, what you understand about the role that he may have played in the murder of your father and uh, the three others that are known as the Craddock Four, um, and just the, the, the suspects that really are involved, because this matter goes back quite a long way. Yeah, it does go quite a long way. Remember, the murders of the Craddock Four were actually uh, sanctioned by the State Security Council, which was one of the top decision-making bodies uh, within the apartheid government back in 1985. So once that decision was then taken, it had to be sent down the chain of command. And obviously, uh, because my dad and his comrades, uh, you know, we all lived in the Eastern Cape, it had to go to the Eastern Province uh, Joint Management Center. And the JMC was then the ones that uh, actioned this. And Baron Duplessis was quite senior within the police uh, as and kind of joint military structures uh, within um, uh, within the, 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 the security apparatus um, of the Eastern Cape at the time. And he would have been one of the people that assisted with the planning. He would have been one of the people, once my father and his comrades were then eventually murdered, uh, Baron Duplessis was one of the people who w would have also assisted with the cover-up of their murders. Naledi. Yeah, you've been pursuing um, this matter for many years, um, uh, Mr. Kalata, and certainly something that you've been looking for answers for for a very long time. I mean, who do you point the finger at uh, when, when you consider the fact that the answers still aren't available to your families and the families of the others? Well, now, Lady, consider the fact that uh, there were six police officers that were denied amnesty for the murders of the Crown Four uh, back in 1998 already. The TRC then gave a um, list of about 300 cases as part of its recommendations to the government of uh, former President Thabo Mbeki in 2003. Now, part of those recommendations were that the, some of these 300 cases be investigated and prosecuted, but with specific reference to the credit Four matter was that all they had to do was to prosecute um, people that were denied amnesty uh, for the credit for. Now, remember that at that time in 2003, now, lady, everybody, everybody that had anything to do with the murders of the Craddock Four was still alive, um, except, I think, um, P.W. Borta. Mm. But everyone else, now, lady, was still alive. So the fact that there was never any movement uh, with regards to prosecuting people linked to the murders of the credit for from 2003 already, we have to now ask that question. What did President Thabo Mbeki do? What did his deputy president at the time, Jacob Zuma, do? What did his um, national director of public prosecutions, Bulelani Nuga, what did they do? Uh, you know, and, 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 we, and, and we have to question all, everybody that was in the ANC government at that time. And we have to question also what the ANC did. What um, resolutions did they take in any of their conferences to... Uh, uh, that you you know um, to solidify the fact around um, 
uh, uh, TRC-related prosecutions and uh, whether or not those resolutions became government policy. Yeah. So if there wasn't a resolution from the ANC, it could never become government policy. And therefore, people within the state were there was no incentive for them okay. to prosecute the TRC-related cases. So that's where we need to look. So you say you're suing the state. Who exactly are you, are you, are you wanting to sue? Well, uh, the, the state, um, uh, that would include uh, former presidents, uh, like some of them that I have just mentioned now. Mm -hmm. We have to look at uh, former uh, national directors of public prosecutions and what it was that they, decisions that they took uh, that could have led to the uh, prosecution of uh, suspects linked to the murders of the Craddock Four. We have to look at the role that Parliament played in providing oversight as to what the, 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 the justice ministries were doing, the justice ministers. We have to look at the justice ministers as well. So we're bringing a class action lawsuit now that, that looks at, at the entire ecosystem of the government and the failures um, to, to ensure that the uh, recommendations of the TRC uh, were implemented uh, and that those were fulfilled. Because if that had happened, Naledi, we would be talking a very different story today where we would have seen people being held accountable for the crimes that they committed against our humanity. Yeah, if you'll allow me to emote just for a moment. I mean, um, once you got the news from the NPA that the last uh, surviving suspect in this matter had died, um, I mean, what, what were the thoughts and emotions that came with that where you've got four families that uh, for uh, over three decades have been pursuing um, uh, some justice? So, you know, what was the sense when you realized that you may very well never get those answers? Now, lady, it was outrage. Uh, you know, I mean, I spoke to my mother uh, and my mother is, is, is she's always very close to, 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 to crying, you know, getting very emotional. So I spoke to her, I spoke to Mrs. Mflaoli, and, and both of them, uh, Naledi, they were really, you know, quite emotional because it's almost, they've been waiting for this uh, prosecution. They've been waiting for closure, uh, you know, with regards to the murders of their husband for four decades now, mm -hmm. and nothing has happened. For me personally, Naledi, I... Uh, you know, I think on, I fell really ill on Saturday. Mm. I got really, really sick. Um, and I, I, I just think it's, you know, all of those years of, of, of this pent up frustration and of seeking justice and whatever. And I think just the realization that, you know, there was now nobody that we could prosecute and hold accountable uh, for the murders of the uh, credit for just it, it made me really sick. But uh, we are working and, and, and trying to find some, uh, uh, some form of counseling that we can uh, provide uh, maybe to some of myself, my siblings, uh, and to the other families as well, because, you know, um, this, this sense of finality, Naledi, is, I, you know, I don't know how to describe it without, without getting emotional, yeah. but it really is... is, is, is yeah, I, I'm at a loss for words. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's just not a nice feeling. It really is not something that I could wish on my worst enemy. Um, just to have a sense that, um, you know, no one will ever be held responsible for taking my father away from me. Uh, and and it's, yeah, it, it just makes me very emotional. Yeah, Mr. Kalata, well, we do appreciate you giving us your time. Lukanya Kalata, the journalist, author, and also the son of Fort Kalata, who was one of the Craddock Four assassinated in 1985.